start off by saying this. Do not blame that game on the defense, okay? I don't care who you play, whether it's a high school team, a junior college team, a college team, much less an NFL team. When you turn the ball over five times, four interceptions, one for a touchdown, three others in field position to set up touchdowns, you ain't going to beat anybody I just talked about. Anybody. All right? And that was a disgraceful performance, in my opinion. We threw that game. We gave it away by doing that. We gave them the friggin' game. In my opinion, that sucked. Uh, you know, you can't turn the ball over five times like that. Holy crap. I don't know who the hell we think when we are when we do something like that. Unbelievable. Five turnovers. One of them for, we've, we've thrown four interceptions for touchdowns this year. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Let me say shout out to BetUS. This video is sponsored by BetUS. And as I go through here, because... We have, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. As we go through here and we look at our odds, you can have 150% matching by using YouTube 150. And as I'm looking at the game tonight, the Buffalo Bills plus two, the Miami Dolphins are favored by two. Kind of surprised by that because I thought Josh Allen is the greatest thing since Joe Montana. But, um, Going down here with our Cowboys, of course, you know I have to take my Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys minus six against New Orleans. And that brings me to the question. Definitely check out BetUS. Brings me to the question because people are looking and seeing the score of uh, Carolina getting mollywhopped 47 to 10, where the New Orleans Saints scored literally on nine straight possessions. And it looked like we we're talking about a team that was playing tiddlywinks versus a team playing 3D chess. And the question is, do we believe the hype on the New Orleans Saints? Now, I have to say, two of my, my buddies are there, but you're not friends this week. Demario Davis and John Ridgway. I would love to still have John Ridgway because that is a skull cracker um, down with New Orleans coming into town. Um, I've never been a big Derek Carr fan. I just haven't been. I just haven't been. Sorry. I think he's one of those guys that have been very much overrated. And if I look at the stats from last week, when you see 47 points, you say, oh, my God, what a monster game. But Derek Carr was 19 of 23, 200 yards, three TDs, nice, efficient day. But it was a whole team win. Alvin Kamara had 83 yards rushing. Um, and so on. But it was really the defense that literally stymied Bryce Young. And you have to start wondering because, as, you know, that now that the conversation is dead, at least for the next four or five years with Dak Prescott, is looking at drafting quarterbacks, it ain't easy, bro. It ain't easy. And you have to start thinking about Bryce Young and saying, was that, going, was that a mistake? Is he going to be a bust? Yeah. Not my problem. We have Dak Prescott. So the good news for us going into this game is, of course, Jake Ferguson surprising everybody that we heard that he was going to be practicing yesterday. And the more you listen to him, the more he sounds like he's going to be able to go. Now, of course, the, the training staff is going to protect him from himself. And I dare say, if you think back a couple of years ago, Dalton Schultz last year here, I believe he hyperextended his knee, and I think he was worried about losing his starting position, and he ended up coming back, you know, almost immediately. I'm not sure that it did himself a, a service because it seemed like he wasn't quite there, um, you know, so I don't know if it's better to go ahead and say, Jake Ferguson, as much as I want you on the field, I, I need you to make sure you're 100% because there are 17 games in a regular season. There are, oh my God, it's literally a marathon. And so we need you when it counts down the stretch. And I'm not sure if missing a game or two now um, to make sure he's healthy when he gets back versus him coming back and never be anywhere close to what he was. 
uh, will be the thing. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. And hopefully he'll be there. Now, here's an interesting take, at least for me. Now, everybody says that now Dak Prescott's got his contract, that he has all the pressure on him. I don't know that he has any more pressure than what he was already putting on himself because Dak Prescott is a guy who um, always puts pressure on himself to succeed. The thing that's interesting to me is it seems like there's a sense of urgency with the Cowboys and the Cowboys players where their focus is winning the Super Bowl. At least that's the way. They're at least talking the talk. We'll see if they walk the walk. And you can see that maybe all of the things that were said about the Dallas Cowboys, about them not having talent, you know, that, you know, remember, they literally trashed the Dallas Cowboys and told you they don't have talent, that they're not in good shape. They didn't do anything in free agency to help them. We're only going by week one, week one, okay? So don't get too excited. But week one, what I said the Cowboys have to do for this season to end where we want it to be is they have to thread the needle. And by threading the needle, that means that Diggs doesn't have any after effects of an ACL. That our linebacking core, that Eric Kendricks, isn't an old guy that's just here to get a paycheck like a Clinton Ha Ha Dix. That Overshone is going to give us a big boost that we were hoping for his rookie year and be able to show. That our defensive line was going to be able to hold up against running teams. That Tyler Guyton and Cooper Beebe were going to be the real deals out of the box. And that Zeke Elliott doesn't look like he's 50 years old. Those were the main things that we know we have to do to even have an opportunity or a chance. We can't have a hole in the linebacking core like we did last year, where we literally didn't have linebackers. We had safeties. And you could already see all of those things thus far have been working out pretty well. The defensive front, which is a totally different philosophy from Dan Quinn. And I don't, don't hate on Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn was exactly what we needed after Mike Nolan. We needed a guy that could actually make the players feel good about themselves and get some confidence and at least start the process of getting better. Mike Zimmer is the polar opposite of being the best friend, the, the good uncle. He's a guy that's going to hold you accountable, and he is going to take it to another level. See, Dan Quinn's thing was, we're going to get after the quarterback. Damn the torpedoes, damn the running game. We're going to get after the quarterback and cause turnovers, which is great until you get to a team that runs the football, and that was our Achilles heel. Now you've got the defensive front. You've got defensive linemen better than we've had in a while. I would say more complete, at least at the moment. We'll have to see how all these parts and stuff go. You know, If I'm still talking this tune next month, then we've got something here. But I feel good going into this game, but I feel like this is one of those games that with our schedule being so tough, we need to get this win. To me, this is almost a must win, knowing that we got the 49ers, that we got Baltimore up on deck and things like that. If we can get a little bit of momentum in here and get these games going, it will bode really, really well for the rest of the season. And we'll be breaking down a lot of this stuff as to, uh, tonight. Uh, we'll be doing the live stream for the Buffalo Bills-Miami Dolphin game. And we'll definitely be talking more and more about the individual matchups that we're going to be facing. Here's where I, I kind of I, I enjoy this because it doesn't matter what the Cowboys do. They will always be deemed they made the wrong move. It's just the way it is when you're the Dallas Cowboys. It's just the way it is. So let's listen to this. Is this the best Dallas Cowboys team? Believe it. Let's see. And against the Colts. Hawk, if I said this is Dak Prescott's best Cowboys team, you believe it or not? I'm believing it. I'm believing it because, look, CeeDee Lamb came back late. He's working some kinks out, but he still looked good throughout this game. Ezekiel Elliott looked better than we suspected. 
in, in week one, that offensive line looks solid. And Mike Zimmer coming to the defensive side of the Dallas Cowboys yeah. is a difference maker. So I truly believe we're going to see a version of the Cowboys that we haven't seen in recent years. We're going to talk about them in a moment, but let's let the man who owns the team talk about them first. Jerry Jones, mm -hmm. as you may have heard, gave Dak Prescott the biggest contract in the history of the NFL. And then yesterday he was talking about his expectations. Listen. Is a Super Bowl a necessity for you to consider the DAC extension a success over the life of the contract? I'm going to call it a hypothetical because I'm not going to give you a straight answer. And that's <laughs> probably a pretty good question. I will say this, that uh, any time that we've ever made players the highest played uh, uh, player, uh, key players such as Troy Aikman, uh, the most highest paid player in the game, we won Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. That is factual, right? I mean, it is an accurate statement. Actually, Dak has played eight seasons. Troy Aikman won three Super Bowls in his first eight yes. seasons in Dallas. That's the mm -hmm. one thing missing can from the resume. Have, can we just mm -hmm. we have a can we just have a moment, just a feel-good moment? Mm -mm. Like, we finally got to the point where the guy got his money, and here comes Jerry Jones already making us, you know, talk about, you know, Dak on the hot seat, essentially. Like, I just, like, I was there. I was there at that game. Talk, we talked to Dak after the game. This, this felt like elation. This felt like, yes, they finally got our guy. And Jerry starts off the week with, yeah, well, you know, obviously the expectation is all Super Bowls, which he's not wrong. Yeah, he's right. not wrong. Mm -hmm. But the expectation for this team has been to get to the Super Bowl. The, th that's my whole point. Yes, yes it is. To the question. In, yes. this, in this particular case. If, if, uh, if, 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 if the logic follows that, why wouldn't you have paid him a long time ago? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you, you got all the money you got, <laughs> if, that's, if that's the logic, I'd have signed him well, a long time ago. Look, Dak Prescott, one might argue, has been under as much pressure yeah. as any yeah, player in the sure. NFL for the longest sure. time. Does having now the biggest contract in the history of the sport, does it increase the level of pressure a player feels? Yeah, I, I can't imagine that Dak Prescott can feel, feel any more pressure mm -hmm. that he's felt through the course of his career at every turn. It's been us talking about it, them talking about it, Jerry holding out the money to the last minute every single time. I don't think this matters to Dak Prescott. Maybe it matters to Jerry, but he should take some responsibility. We spent a lot of this offseason critical about how willing he was to spend the money to make hey, him go. Yep. So you can't put it on Dak all the time. At some point, you're going to have to take responsibility. And it's all on Dak. Make, make, make no mistake, it's all on Dak mm -hmm. right now. Did Elliott look better? For sure. Red zone, they scored, which they couldn't do last year. All that is improvement. Howie Roseman got the Eagles better, too. Mm -hmm. Detroit is better. San Francisco is better. Like, yep. The teams you're playing are legit. Jerry didn't go. He signed his guys. The, he and Steven didn't bring in guys to help the squad or bolster the squad. And, and Graz was here yesterday saying, well, they believe in their battle. Okay, well, so does every other team. But they go out and help. They, they, they're not just asking Dak, play above the numbers, play right. above the X's and O's to carry your team. Because if that's your ask, these other teams are better than you. If anything, him getting his money actually probably relieve his, relieve some of that. Money, uh, that right? would be my thing. Big contract. Right. He got what he was after. Now he can just focus on playing and being the best version of himself. In some ways, when Jerry says this, I take it as him like complimenting himself. <laughs> of, like, listen, yeah, not you got to know I'm not just some guy, <laughs> right? And he's being like, every time I give somebody money, it's because they're going to bring me a Super Bowl. Yeah. So that's what it felt more like than, than, than putting him on a hot seat. Jim, you were there. Yeah. I, did that game in the building, I know how we handled it Monday, mm -hmm. did that game feel like it was more a referendum on how good the Cowboys are or how not so good the team they were playing was? That, the the pregame was all about Dak and his money. Postgame, it was what, what Deshaun Watson was that. That's really mm -hmm. the storyline. So in that Cowboys visitors locker room, even CD was talking about like, yeah, I didn't really play well. You know what I mean? Like, we, like I just, I, I did okay. Everybody understands, like, that Browns team, for as tough as they are, that was not a good showing by the Browns. And that you was think? a great showing by the Cowboys. They were a playoff team a year ago with uh, Joe Flacco at quarterback. That team is really good. And the Browns, you're yeah, talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah, that team is really talented and very good, particularly on defense. I think the Cowboys should be proud of the way that they controlled that game from start to finish and answered some of the questions. They're going to need to continue to answer these questions, but they answered some of the questions we had about their offensive line. We're back on Get Up. Okay, so here's what's funny. Here's what's funny is listening to the talking hits. So they killed us because they said our roster is lousy. We heard Dan Orlowski literally say that, you know, that, that the Rams are better, the Lions are better. 
Seattle's better. Um, the Eagles are better. The 49ers are better. That Atlanta is better. You know, somebody else in the South was better. You know, it, just literally going down. So now all of a sudden, the pivot has happened where now they're hyping up the Cowboys and telling you that they're great and that they, you know, shouldn't lose a game or anything else. That Dak Prescott, of course, is, is going, you know, all the pressure is on Dak Prescott after not doing things to really help the team like others did. Now, there is somewhere a happy medium. The Cowboys did do things that helped themselves. We, we ended up doing things or we had projections of things. When you think of losing Stephon Gilmore and you have Diggs, that's an all-pro coming back. When you think about not having linebackers and you get overshown, who looks like a, a, a heat-seeking missile, and Eric Kendricks, who understands the system, you are in better position than you were. When you have gone through and you've gotten bigger defensive linemen, some with experience, some are younger guys, that your defensive line is better than where it was. We don't know how the running game is going to be going forward. We don't know how the receiving game is going to be going forward. And we've only had one game with our rookies' um, offensive line starting. And potentially, we are a better team. The question will be is, are we a good enough team to be able to go and do great things? You're going to have to hold on tight and wait to see on that one. The Cowboys have a good start. They need to stay healthy. They need to get a couple of breaks. And they may just maybe need to look at adding a piece or two going down the road here for a stretch run. Um, on Deshaun Watson, it's kind of, again, this goes to the whole thing for all the people that hate Dak Prescott and say, just move on. When you think about where the Giants are right now with Daniel Jones, when you think about people uh, in Cleveland wanting to, to bench Deshaun Watson and uh, potentially they're trying to see if they can void his contract, um, with the charge that allegedly just popped up. When you look at a Carolina that drafted a Bryce Young and so on, you actually have to look at this and say, damn, we're actually fortunate to have Dak Prescott, who has, for the most part, been stable. And I pointed out in a video yesterday as we talk about how Dak chokes, when I look back at some of the playoff games, when you know the losses, and I look at, the Green Bay Packers, where he's got a 99 rating and three TDs and one interceptions going toe-for-toe -toe with Aaron Rodgers. When I look at the Rams game, where the Rams literally ran 273 yards on the ground, and Dak Prescott has got 199 yards and two TDs, and uh, Jared Goff has half of that. But we only get 50 yards total rushing. I can't look at that and say, it's all on you, Dak. So, it's a team sport, it's a team game, and hopefully our team is a better team and we'll get a better result. As always, good people, I appreciate y'all, and I will see you soon. And uh, let's end with this. My new way, King Dick, back here. And so before we start this video, I got to get this mother-humping thing out of the way.